Hello and welcome to Capital Market this evening and Temple Ashadio. Thanks a great deal for joining us on the program. It was a four-day week, uh, trading week, and of course, that's across the markets, across equity debt, uh, which includes treasury bills, bonds, and open market operations. But at the equity space, we know that uh, the, the equity market actually extended its bullish run, uh, while the secondary market of treasury bills saw uh, a little bit of tepid performance. But we know that open market operations, uh, maturities, and of course, the bond segment of the uh, debt markets performed very, very uh, impressively. This week. Now, we know that uh, this week as well, uh, the federal government uh, made a, sent a letter out to the National Assembly asking for approval around it, some 850 billion naira that was meant to be borrowed externally before. But now it is, requ it is requesting that the source of that particular figure should be varied. And of course, uh, we know that eventually that came through. And then the debt management office went ahead to issue a press statement to the capital market community where this fund is to be uh, raised. And of course, uh, that was digested by a lot of uh, investors, the dealers and treasurers in the market. At the end of the day, folks began to uh, take advantage of the low valuations and lower yields uh, now available at the secondary space of the market. Uh, the earlier auction uh, that happened last week uh, Wednesday, uh, where the uh, debt management office had actually planned to raise some 60 billion naira and they got an oversubscription of uh, over 400 uh, percent, is a major indicator that this uh, 850 billion naira that has now been localized is something that will uh, come true. In terms of the markets, we'll get back to the market later to be able to understand how that will pan out. But basically, we have a former commissioner of finance in Imo State and, of course, a professor of capital market studies at Nasarawa State University, Professor Uche Waleke, joining us now uh, for this conversation on the 850 billion naira uh, that the federal government is now intending to raise domestically. Uh, good evening, so thank you so much for coming through on the program. Yeah, thank you, Temple, for inviting me. It's my pleasure. Okay. All right. Sir. Uh, so this week at the National Assembly, we got that approval. Uh, the federal government's requesting uh, to vary the source of its uh, 850 billion naira that earlier externalized uh, to the domestic uh, capital market. But tell us, how well positioned is the domestic capital market to raise such fund uh, for the federal government at this point? Yeah. Uh, first and foremost, um, it's important to realize that. Um, the, if uh, there is anything that COVID-19 has done is to dampen investors' um, you know, sentiments, uh, particularly um, in the international scene. And, um, and that's why the federal government um, deemed it fit to convert um, the, what would have been the external, external loan to uh, domestic um, uh, loan. Uh, if you recall, the government had provided about 1.5 trillion naira um, as part of uh, money to part finance the 2020 budget, 850 billion of that, you know, to come from ex external source. Well, that's in line with the uh, debt management strategy of rebalancing the debt uh, stock, a little more in favour of um, external loans. But of course, we know what has happened. Um, uh, the risk aversion for of investors, you know, have um, risen. And um, the chances of uh, raising that money from the international capital market, you know, have, uh, have dimmed. I was looking at the closing prices of um, uh, the euro bonds and diaspora bonds that we issued. Uh, the one to mature in 2021, that is the first Medin uh, euro bond that we issued. If you recall, that was on, uh, well, in January 2011, uh, it was uh, the... Uh, Issue then at the yield that issue was around seven percent, but um, just two days ago the yield has uh, risen up to sixteen percent, and of course that means the price uh, has dipped. So th that tells you that yield in the international capital market is uh, is up, and so uh, for that reason, because the major attraction of external uh, loans um, in the first place, you know, you know, has been the fact that they appear cheaper. I mean, the euro bonds have appeared cheaper relative to, do, to the ones we have been raising here domestically. But now that seems to be, you know, eroded. So it makes a lot of sense to, you know, convert them to, um, uh, you know, do domestic debt. Of course, we also know the employer has, the, it has its, own, its own downside. So you talked about the uh, capacity of the market. 
Um, and the fact that um, if the more government comes into the domestic um, space, um, you know, interest rates are driven up, and that also tends to crowd out um, you know, the, the, the private sector. But in any case, I think the capacity is there. You just mentioned it. Um, the last auction that the um, DMO did was oversubscribed, so there's strong demand for uh, you know, government bonds. Um, besides, of course, this is something you would expect to be st staggered over time. I, I expect that the 850 billion be disaggregated into various instruments, um, uh, namely um, the sovereign bond, um, Sukuk, um, F FGN savings bond, uh, green bonds, and so on. Uh, particularly if we tie them to uh, specific projects and ring fence it. If we're doing Sukuk, for example, you know the, the proceeds are tied, uh, ring fence. So the more we do project tied um, or infrastructure bonds, as opposed to doing general ob obligation bonds, you know, the better it is uh, for the economy. So I think the capacity is there, and I think um, the economy will um, absorb, absorb it. Uh, in any case, it will further deepen the market. It will lead to increased tempo in a capital market um, um, you know, activities. But I also said that the downside is that um, well, corporates will be, appear to be you know, uh, just um, away. If, because if you look at the composition of our debt, um, domestic debt stock is, is heavily you know, uh, tilting in favor of um, FGM bonds. FG, FGN bonds constitute over 70% of, um, of what you have um, in the domestic um, markets. And um, with this now, of course, the size will also appreciate. But that is the, the, the times we'll find ourselves. Uh, there's, as I said, it's justified um, that the government is deciding to convert all to domestic debt. And that's, of course, uh, bearing in mind that the government is also getting some money from the external uh, multilateral institutions in particular. The World Bank, where we expect to get about $2.5 billion. The African Development Bank, where we also expect $1 billion. And I also, uh, I've also been told that we're also expecting some money from the Islamic Development Bank um, as, um, you know, of course, the, as well as the Afri Afrexin. You know about the IMF. Um, $3.4 billion um, we're expecting. So if you look at the $6.9 billion um, external uh, loans we are, we are going for, that's about um, uh, 2.5 uh, trillion naira. Uh, so that is also coming from ex the external front. Um, the advantage is, is having is that the ones from the multilateral, particularly the World Bank and um, African Development Bank, uh, I, uh, naturally you would expect that there will be longer term loans and the concessional loans. The one I am con a little concerned about is the one that is coming from the, the $3.4 billion from the I IMF, um, which I consider a sweet and sour uh, you know, um, grip. So in terms of the local markets where these funds will be raised, uh, what do you think this means for the PFAs that constitute uh, already some 51% of the bonds market and, of course, the subscriptions of the existing federal government bonds. Do you think this will uh, shore up their uh, quota in it? And if it does, uh, how will they be able to meet the obligations of a lot of the contributors uh, that are now, uh, some, of which, some of whom are now experiencing, uh, experiencing un unemployment and at the end of the day will need to draw from their accounts? Yes, of course, that is going to, uh, there's no doubt that the institutional investors uh, will be playing a major role um, in, the, um, in the bond um, issuance uh, program of the federal government. The one they did the last time, was, of course, they dominated, uh, bearing in mind that uh, foreign investors are, um, you know, are exiting the scene, uh, which is why I suggested that um, this time around, um, efforts should be made to uh, disaggregate, uh, you know, the the issuance, such that we have a way of crowding in, re, you know, retail investors. Uh, if you issue sovereign bond, for example, we know the minimum subscription is 50 million naira, uh, you know, ditto for, you know, treasury uh, bills, and um, a lot of people may not be able to afford that investors. But if you do sukuk, where one with 10,000 naira, you know, can do 10 units of um, um, 1,000 each. Okay, or you do uh, FGN savings bond, where with five thousand naira to you, you, somebody can be uh, you know at, you know admitted. Uh, so that has a way of um, so allowing.
high entry um, entry level, and then that way you you know you in quotes you know you different different efforts and franchise um, a lot of investors. Yes, pension funds um, will be playing in that market, but again, of course, you know that's also um, um, you know an an invest. Um, um, well, uh, Prof, we, we, we all know that the DMO's uh, calendar for the second quarter of the year is out. Now, the plan is to raise between uh, some 75 billion and 165 billion naira. Do you see these new uh, uh, developments now of forcing the DMO to revise the provisions of its calendar, uh, perhaps for the second quarter of the year, as it's been spelled out before? Yes, absolutely, absolutely. Because uh, when the DMO had that initial calendar, this development was not, um, uh, you know, uh, figured in. Now that um, we are having a situation where what used to be um, an external, um, you know, loan is now being converted to a, a domestic loan, the DMO will also have to uh, accommodate that, you know, in their in their calendar. So I think it will certainly. Um, affect the, uh, the the calendar of um, um, you know activities by the DMO. So one would have literally uh, thought that the uh, multilateral bor borrowings that the federal government has also planned for uh, will be something that will be sufficient for the the country at this point. Uh, so that way they probably don't need to raise the 850 billion naira. Uh, for example, uh, they've got the uh, 3.4 billion naira that has just been approved, even though it's a non-concessional loan for, by the IMF. We also have the 2.5 billion naira from World Bank and of course 1 billion naira from AFDB. But uh, generally, you seem to have cons a concern around these non-concessional loans. Tell us more about that, sir. Yes, uh, that's uh, with specific reference to the IMF um, $3.4 billion uh, in dollar loan. Uh, first of all, the $850 billion, uh, recall it was already provided in the, in the 2020 budget, a $1.5 trillion budget. So it's not as if it's a new new borrowing. So if they are converting it with the approval of the National Assembly, I think that is in order. Uh, we are, we've gone ahead again to uh, seek um, additional funding. Of course, you know, um, the COVID-19, apart from the health crisis, is also creating um, an economic crisis. Uh, revenue is shrinking. At the same time, expenditure is uh, spending is uh, increasing, you know, exponentially. Uh, so the government will need a lot of money to, um, you know, to stand to stand the fighting chance of, um, you know, defeating the the invisible enemy. Um, so I, I don't think um, the what we are what we have gone for. You know, it's too much. Uh, you know, you know, for the country, the World Bank loan, as I said, um, I expect that to be concessional longer term. That of African Development Bank to one billion dollars, and you know, don't forget too that one billion of that sum, I understand, will be shared to uh, the thirty-six, you know, state governments. So one billion dollars means uh, translates to one billion naira each to each of the thirty-six, you know, state governments to also assist in that um, in that fight. Now, uh, back to the point I, I was making. Uh, uh, you know, I, I described it as a sweet and sour uh, a grape. The sweet side, of course, you know, is that um, the 3.5 billion, 3.4 billion dollars um, uh, would no doubt help to support a big balance of payment um, deficit, which we understand has gone as high as uh, three uh, uh, above three percent of, um, of of GDP, thereby exerting a lot of pressure on external reserves. Um, as you just showed on your screen, external reserves um, uh, have plummeted to as um, as low as $3.3 billion, uh, from as high of uh, $38, $39 billion um, just a few, a few months ago, I think in December. So uh, the rate of uh, depletion is, um, is worrisome. So part of that money, we understand, will be used to support the BOP um, position. And again, uh, part of it is um, also said to be going to be unlent to the federal government uh, to be used to fight the um, uh, to expand health uh, facilities. So that's the sweet side. It will again boost our reserves and put the central bank um, uh, you know, in a stronger position uh, to perform its functions of um, you know, defending the Naira. But the, the uh, sore part um, is the, you know, the conditions under which it is being uh, uh, you know, taken. Well, Prof, let's hear your passing uh, words before we let you go this evening. 
Uh, okay, Martin Watts. Uh, well, um, well, you know, I was I was I was uh, talking about the IMF um, 3.5 billion uh, quickly. Um, is, uh, we are getting it on pure commercial terms. It's carrying a lending rate. There is a commitment fee. There is a surcharge. There is a uh, service charge. The service charge alone is, uh, it says, 50 basis points, uh, which is 0.5 uh, of 0.5% um, of amount we are taking. That translates to 17 you know, million million dollars. And, of, and they also expect us to cooperate with them, you know, in uh, fixing the balance of payment. Um, uh, the deficit and that cooperation is now translated into, um, you know, having some conditions um, that may eventually, in the near term, in the short term, you know, lead to um, increasing exchange rates, um, um, you know, tightening tightening monetary policy further, and on the fiscal side, maybe even a further revision of, of the of the VAT after the pandemic, and um, of course a cut in spending and all that. So that's just my um, a little concern because the conditions are as good as um, one has one is uh, taking a, a full fledged program, you know, with the uh, with the uh, with the with the fund uh, because if you look at it, they say it's the same conditions that you get when you are going through the SBA window stand standby arrangement window or the other window they call a flexible credit line. So it, it, they're the same conditions. And when I looked at the 21 countries that got approvals, uh, um, African countries that got approvals recently uh, for this rapid financing, only three of them went under the rapid financing instrument. And that's Nigeria, Ethiopia, and um, Gabon. The other countries went under the, are uh, going through the rapid credit facility, which carries zero interest rates and um, um, maturity of 10 years. This one is just five years, and of, in three years' time, we will start, we'll start repaying. Um, well, as I said, uh, provided it um, is uh, put to good use, uh, it helps the balance of payment um, um, you know, a challenge, and is also the other aspect is also uh, you know, properly utilized in the, in the health sector. All right, Professor Uche Waleke, Professor of Capital Market Studies at the University of Nasarawa and former Commissioner for Finance in Omo State. Thank you so much for your attention. We like your thoughts and we appreciate them. Thank you so much, Prof, for your time on the program this evening. You're welcome.